everybody, it's Sierra, the Artsy Badger. And today, we're doing another creature creation video. So I hopped onto the internet and went to that random animal generator website, changed the number to three, and this is what we got. Since puppy is such a broad animal, I decided to base my puppy off of the one that is in the picture, which I believe is some kind of coon hound, red hound, something like that. As usual, when I start one of these creature creation challenges, I like to draw all of the animals in their separate forms. So doing a few studies of each animal to start off. I was surprised at how difficult this little coon hound puppy was. The dog itself wasn't that difficult to draw, but making it look like a puppy was the hard part because I didn't want to add too many wrinkles since that almost makes it look older. But in the photos that I was using, their eyes weren't particularly large. I do, as you see right here, make all three of the dog's eyes much larger than I had originally. And I think that really helped with the sort of puppy aspect to the drawings because at first, although potentially realistic to my references, they just weren't giving off those cutesy young vibes that I was looking for. So I just increased the eye size and I think that helped a lot. I'm also really glad that I got to draw some dogs in this challenge because lately I have been seriously considering opening up commissions for pet portraits, but I don't want to do it until I feel really confident drawing a lot of different breeds of dogs. And so this was great practice. Then I had to lightly erase all of my pencil sketches because for some reason my ballpoint pen wouldn't draw over graphite. I didn't even think about it before I started drawing that I probably should have used a Prismacolor like I did in the last video where I did a bunch of studies, but it worked out fine besides the extra erasing I had to do. I'm still really loving doing this style of study where I sketch in some things and then outline it in ballpoint pen. I am super digging this ballpoint pen. I love it so much. It's so smooth and it works really well for these kinds of loose doodles. I struggled to decide what coloring to give each of these dogs because I wanted them to stand out from each other, but the pictures that I was referencing, they pretty much all had the same coloring. <laughs> so I just tried to vary it a little bit to give this page a bit more interest. Bats were surprisingly fun to draw, and I was focusing mostly on the face because I think that is part of the bat that makes it most distinct besides its wings, I suppose. I felt like I was really able to communicate the essence of a bat with a lot fewer strokes than I did with the dogs, and I really like that for these kind of simple studies. It's fun to be able to get more information with less effort, I guess. I think that's the ultimate goal of these kinds of studies. And as I did previously with animal studies, I colored in the background with just a water-based marker that I had. This one turned out a lot more streaky, I think, than the previous one did, and that kind of bothers me, but I am trying to let it go because this is just a sketchbook and these are just studies. They don't need to be anything perfect. And you all might be wondering, where's the reindeer? Don't worry, I continue onto the second page because there is no way I was gonna fit all my studies in this first page. I started off by drawing another bat because I felt like I hadn't quite exercised all the possible facial expressions for a bat. This one has its mouth wide open and it's either using its echolocation or eating a bug, who knows, maybe both. <laughs> but I thought that that was kind of a fun pose to try out. And since one of the prompts was puppy, I decided to look at mostly baby reindeer. There's surprisingly few reference images for baby reindeer. So I was working off of pretty tiny blurry images for these but they also turned out super cute, I think, and baby reindeer are just so adorable. 
With the other two animals, I did three studies of each, but with the reindeer, I didn't feel like I needed to because as soon as I started sketching the reindeer, I began to have an idea for what I wanted to do with my creature. So I just went straight to inking after I finished that second little study. Since I don't have much to say about the inking process, I'm gonna take this moment to thank all of you that are new here. We have reached over 300 subscribers, which is crazy. I feel like we just celebrated hitting 100 subscribers. I didn't even really make a true shout out for the 200 mark, but we hit 300 pretty quickly and that's just really exciting and it keeps me all the more motivated to keep posting these videos. I am really loving this new sketchbook and the direction I'm taking my art and I feel like it shows with the amount of you that have joined the Artsy Badger family. So thank you all for being here and being so interactive and kind. You guys really spoil me rotten with your kind words in the comments. So I just wanted to say a big old thank you. And now I'm starting on my creature. So the components that I took from each animal are as follows. The face of my creature is mostly based off of the puppy, but with the bat nose. This nose is based off of the bat that is in the actual original image from the three generated animals. And then I gave him little peeking out reindeer antlers because I thought that that would be cute, even though I didn't give any of the baby reindeers in the references little poking out antlers. I just thought that it added to it. And then the body is largely based off of the reindeer. He also has some sharp teeth like the bat, but those are kind of dog-like too. I just thought that it would make him look slightly more unusual, if that makes sense. I really love the way that these two preliminary sketches turned out. Spoiler alert, I don't like my final product as much as I like these sketches. I think that these first couple sketches have a lot more personality and character. I especially like the full body pose to the right, and that's probably because I used a reference image for that one. I just think it turned out really well, and it is very grounded in realism, but has the quirkiness of this challenge and my sort of cartoon style. I just really love the way it turned out. I'm also looking at it and it looks slightly more like a goat maybe than a reindeer, but hopefully you guys will be able to see the reindeer in it. The only reason I didn't just recreate this pose for my second drawing is because I largely wanted to show off the nose a little bit more, like in the front facing sketch to the left. Another thing was that I didn't want the pose to look too stiff, so I decided I wanted to make him leaping through the air and I thought that would be really cute, which it is in theory. I just think that my proportions look a little bit off, which it is a made up creature, but a large part of the success of the original full body sketch is that it is grounded in realism, so it looks like it could exist in the real world. This one, I kind of struggled to make it look that way. Something's wrong with the face too. It's not quite as cute or maybe as long muzzled as I would like it to look. It, he looks a little smush faced, maybe more like a bulldog or a pug with really long ears, but that's just because I'm not that good at perspective. <laughs> I did cut out a majority of my trial and error in getting to this point in the drawing. So believe me when I say that I really struggled to arrive to this pose. I think this final pose looks cute. It's just not exactly what I had envisioned, but I still like it.
then I had to decide what I wanted to do with the background. I didn't want to do a full on background, mostly because I knew this video was gonna be really long already. We're already at the 10 minute mark. And I've also just been really enjoying doing little floral motifs around my characters. So that's what I went for. And I did something a little different than I usually do. I did a sort of asymmetrical border of floral. I think I went a little overboard with it. I probably should have put fewer branches, but I think the branches themselves look really cute. And I didn't know how to make a sort of halo like I do with most of my other drawings, because I was afraid it would just look like it was farting out branches and leaves. <laughs> Now to my favorite part, the coloring. This is when the sketchbook started to show some of its weaknesses to me. I think I was really over blending because I didn't think this about my Copic collection, but I'm starting to notice more and more that my browns are kind of lacking in variety. I know I say this in every video, I'm always like, I'm missing colors, I need more colors. But I truly feel that way about my browns these days. I don't have enough of the warm tone, earthy oranges that I have been needing a lot lately. So I was really over blending because I was adding a lot of neutral colored browns on top of my oranger browns and this made it so that the paper was just kind of giving up which i can't blame it for that although it is mixed media paper it's not necessarily made to take so much moisture it may be kind of hard to see in this footage but later on when i am coloring in his back legs, you can see it a little bit more. The paper just starts to kind of spot, if that makes sense. The white of the paper and the composition of the paper just starts to show through the marker because I am over blending it and I think the paper itself is actually falling apart a little bit. But what better to do to solve that problem than just keep blending? <laughs> and that's literally what I did. I just kept layering more and more, hoping to fix it. And I think it did in some ways. The darker colors help a lot more. It's when you go over those darker colors with a light color that it starts to pick it up too much, which could be a good thing. A lot of people want the ability to pick up their marker colors if they make mistakes. So in that sense, it is good paper for that. <laughs> but for my blending purposes of this drawing. It was not doing the best. I've also been having a lot of trouble lately with my markers not running out of ink, but the nibs becoming sticky. So if any of you guys have Copic markers yourself and know what that's about and maybe know a solution, I would love to hear it because it's getting kind of annoying. I have had these Copic markers for over a decade. Most of them have never even been refilled or nibs changed, so that might be part of it. I think I heard Bailey J mention the other day that they do have a shelf life of something that's much shorter than a decade. But if you guys have any tips, let me know in the comments down below. I decided to color in the branches in the background in the same color that I colored his collar to just kind of keep everything in the same family. At first I had the branches the same color as the leaves, but I go over them later with a sort of gray-brown color to just kind of separate them from the leaves. And I colored all the little berry bits in red. Right now his eyes are looking kind of scary, but I think when I add another shine into it, it looks a little bit better. Overall, this creature does look like that, a creature. He looks kind of like a troll or something like that, 
but I think he's really cute and embodies all three of my animals pretty well. I have named him a bat-nosed deer hound. And that's it, he's all finished. I hope you guys enjoyed joining me on this journey of creating a creature using a bat, a puppy, and a reindeer. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week.